on our continuing tour of We are here in Granard, North County Longford, home to the Knights and Conquests Heritage and Visitor Centre. The centre is situated beside Ireland's tallest Norman Mott, which is 544 feet high. It was built in 1199 by Richard the Chute, the Lord Chief Justice of Ireland at the time. And in the centre you can experience Norman Ireland at its height. Across the road from the centre is Granard Farmers Mart, and while it doesn't date back as far as the Normans, it is nevertheless a vibrant and bustling mart that truly captures the essence of life in rural Ireland. In the early 70s, at the behest of local men Paddy O'Hara, Tommy Quinn and the then brains behind the town's Granada ballroom, Thomas Kiernan, a deal was struck with local publican John V. Donoghue for a site just off the main N55 at Rat Cronin. 43 shareholders invested £250 each at the time in the venture and despite recessions, beef crises, Ireland's foot and mouth disease and the coronavirus pandemic, Granard Mart has managed to survive the past five decades. It's easy to know it's a mart day from the increased number of tractors and trailers on the roads leading to the mart. The mart runs every Wednesday here in Granard and we visited it on the 3rd of May. The mart is essential to the farming community in the area, attracting both buyers and sellers from all around the region. It is an important hub for the local agricultural industry and provides a vital service to farmers and other members of the community. Local councillor PJ Riley is very much aware of this and he tells us more. So PJ, uh, you have a long connection here with the mart. Yes, a long connection here with the mart. Look, at, I'm coming here from nearly from the mart. It was open. The mart was open in 1971 and it has been very successful down the years and a very a great benefit to the community and to the whole North Longford area and that because Granard Mart was the place where people went with their stock on a regular basis and that to sell on that and it's, it's good to see it still going and still going strong and great to see it improving this year in numbers and everything coming back into the system again because we need the mart we need and it's good for the town as well it's good for business in the town because the mart brings in the farmer the farmer when he's in town will go into shops hardware shops and drapery and that and buy some clothes and spend some money as well and get, get, do, do his day do, do his day's duties when he's in town and that. You know. PJ, been a lot of changes recently. What have you noticed? What are the biggest changes for farmers, both in terms of uh, money they're earning, but also socially and... and yeah, what I mean is uh, cattle prices are very good at the moment, but I have to say overhead costs has gone very expensive. It's very expensive now for uh, contract work, silage making, um, buying meal, all different veterinary and all that, that has increased. Uh, it's, in nearly, it's nearly in the last couple of years, them, them sort of items has increased doubly. Double. So, I mean, it, is, it leaves a lot more uh, expense to the farmer. So, at the end of the day, it's still hard enough to make money farming because even though you're getting a larger price for your stock, for your animal, you still have some more serious expenses to meet, you know. Why are you here today? Because I'm selling cattle for a neighbour. I couldn't come here today. And that, uh, the cattle in, brought, brought the cattle in from. And, that, and you know. hope to get a good price? I hope to get a good price today, yeah. yeah. PJ, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you. There were hundreds of animals being offered for sale with a brisk trade taking place. Once unloaded from the lorries and trailers, the cattle are put into pens. An individual identification tag is then placed on the back of each of the animals and they are lined up according to their sales number. Shane McGovern is also bringing cattle to the mart for a neighbour. He's hauling in cattle, two load of cattle here for farmers here this morning, hoping to, to get a good price this May day. We asked Alex, who works at the mart, about the price of cattle. Cattle are making over 3,000 and 4,000. I call it cattle are great And is it as good as it's ever been? Or? Yeah, it's better, far better. 
reasons. Yeah, the reason, yeah. Why, 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 why is it that? Uh, getting good, good cattle and good quality cattle. Right, so quality cattle. And the market is there for them. The market is there for them, yes. Very good. How there. long are you coming to the market? I'm there, I'm coming to the market for, for the last 30 years. We asked Jody Riley, manager of the mart, about the large volume of sales and money passing through the mart. Well, sure it's not, I suppose. Uh, it's, and this will be actually getting to be a quieter time of the year, so what? But look at it is what it is, it's the same everywhere and cattle are a lot dearer now so we're talking about a lot more money than we would have been talking say even this time last year. Yeah. Uh, an animal that was worth 1300 euros say this time last year is probably up on 1500 now. And the reasons why they're more expensive? So it's the supply I suppose, there's, there's lesser quality say continental cattle coming out due to more dairy bred cattle being around. And in this part of the country, it would have been suckler farmers, small suckler farmers. A lot of them is moving out of that now too. They're, I suppose farmers are getting older and the younger people aren't doing it. So, Kathleen Flaherty, Bernie and Kathleen McDowell have over 40 years experience working in the canteen in the mart. Here uh, in the heart of the mart, feeding an army of farmers is Kathleen and her team. And I'm just sitting down myself. I've been working hard all morning and uh, I'm going to have a little bit of food to replenish me energy. Thanks very much girls. Fair yeah, play to you. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely job. Isn't it strange the way a fry handed up to you mm. always seems to be much better than one you'd make yourself. I'd say they're organic eggs. The canteen begins to empty out as the auction in Ring 1 is about to begin. Farmers make their way into the ring before bidding on livestock. Earlier farmers will have had a look at the stock in the penny area. This gives them an opportunity to have a closer look at the stock being sold. Here they look at their mobility soundness and ensure they are happy with the animal. During the sale, bidders sit or stand where the auctioneer can see them and where they have a clear view of the ring and what's being sold. They listen closely to what the auctioneer is saying as some of them speak very quickly when selling and it can be very difficult to determine what they're actually saying. Also, by sitting back and listening to the sale, they will gain an insight to what the trade is like. And there is a young farmer from Newtown Forbes who also works at the mart, but today he is selling as well. When a lot comes into the ring, most bidders bid calmly and clearly and try to stick to a price they have set themselves beforehand. However, Enda as a seller is hoping this will not be the case here and that bidders will get caught up in the excitement and go higher. How did it go for you? Thank God. Uh, did you get the price you wanted or? Yeah, I got a bit more than I was looking for. Right, you don't want to share that amount with us? No. You? No. What will you do with the profits? Uh, throw it back into the farm to pay off bills and buy more stuff we need to keep them alive. Very good. The farms are milking 50, 60 cows, they're all milking 100 cows now. And then there's new people getting into it too. It was good there for a few years, so it was. So there would be supplying an awful lot more milk than there were a few years ago, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Then the other side of it is, the downside of that is, the more they get into it, the less they're probably going to make. Well, sure, who knows, you see. Yeah. That's it, that's the same with farming. No one knows, yeah. can go anyway, yeah. you know. But that, you say, has an knock-on effect yeah, on yeah. cattle or... Yeah, well, look, yeah. if there was, in this area, if there was a 2,000 dairy bread calves, say, three years ago, there's probably 5,000 now. But of all, anyone that was milking 50, 60 cows, they're all milking 100 cows plus. And there's several new applicants getting into it all the time. And the reasons why they're more so expensive? It's steadier money. They're a check every, you have your check every month. Yeah. You're not, you can't be promised that when you're at beef here, so you can't. Or sucklers, you get your, your grants at the end of the year, yeah. you sell your, off, your, your weanlands or whatever. And that's it. That's it till the following year. There are animals everywhere. Some in holding pens waiting to come into the ring, one or more in the ring, and sold animals in another holding pen. Most people are sitting on tiered seats with a small group resting against a rail that separates the public from the ring where the cattle pass through when their turn to be sold comes. Signals made by dealers to the auctioneer with four fingers barely being raised and the tiniest of movements are bids that cause an increase in the bidding. 
as in most auctions, the speed of the bidding and the through movement of cattle is quick and easy. The mart also allows farmers to network and meet with each other and discuss the challenges and opportunities facing the industry. It's a day out, away from the isolation, that often comes with farming. The women in the canteen are very much aware of this. I think it's very important for the people to socialise and uh, meet here and have conversations and a bit of crack. It's very important here every week. A lot of the people are the same people that come in every week and we're very familiar with them all. For most of the farmers here now that you know and you're, you're chatting to them or whatever, what do you think are their, is their biggest worry? It's, uh, you know, there's several of them. So there is, it's, obviously it's price at the minute, will the price hold? Store cattle there, I wouldn't have uh, gone to grass now, there'd be the dearest stores probably ever went to grass. Cattle, men would have been selling their beef last year, maybe at around, if they're averaging 16, 1700, they're given that for stores this year to go back to grass with. So price would be the main thing in short term, but I suppose there's long term things there as well. Uh, stability over a long period of time now. Is there young people going to come in and do it? That's another thing. You're, you're a young man yourself, uh, but what I notice here is that most of the farmers here are, let's say, at least 60, if not more. So where, where is, is farming going? Uh, I know a lot of farmers are part-time farmers. It's all part-time around here. There's, and I'd say if you go into any mart in the country, it's the same story. It's, get, it's, it's an older and older uh, game now, so it is the younger people aren't doing it. There's not enough to be made out of it, you know. But I, I know myself from uh, chatting to young kids, particularly in school and all that, they, they, they have a huge interest in farming and tractors and machinery and, and cattle and cows and all that sort of stuff. But obviously they're not going to make it a career because the, the money isn't there. The money's probably not in it. And you say, see, all that machinery and stuff has gone way up in, in, in value and price. To get into farming now, even at a small scale, it's going to take a lot of money. Going to take you know, talking probably hundreds of thousands, even only to get in there, maybe the 30, 40 cows between sheds and concrete and, and tractors and machinery, everything's gone. So, anyone that's not in it, there's going to be no one getting into it, it's just not an option. Uh, and what percentage of the animals today would have been bought online? Uh, well, I'll have to look in there now uh, today, but there was, a, there was a lot of online action here today. On Monday nights, we were weaning sale here, and be, it'll be more so. People come in there maybe on the way home from work. Take down a few numbers there, look at which ones suit them or not, and go home, have the dinner and buy away at their cattle. Farmer Phil and guys on YouTube. Yeah. Seems to be a lot of them around. For me, even though I'm not particularly into farming, they seem, they seem to be very engaging, very entertaining. Yeah. What, what do you make of them yourself? It's just very great crack, so it is. Yeah. It's a great crack. Would, would you ever consider doing one yourself now? No. It's a no. skill? No, no. No, I would have no interest in nothing like that now, so I wouldn't uh, But look at those, I had the best of luck to them through it there, but, but there is a lot of, uh, I suppose, them online farms and people selling their produce online. Uh, it's become very popular, I know, too, and maybe that's the future, I don't know. Who knows? You know. Jody, thanks very much indeed. Great day to you. As we wrap up our visit to the Granard Mart, I'd like to thank everybody for the great welcome we received from both staff and farmers. It was a very enjoyable day for us. Kathleen and her team have a few parting words for the farmers. I hope they made a bit of money today. Make lots of money. And come in and spend it. Come in and spend it here. Come in and spend it. <laughs> and don't forget to pay a visit to the Knights and Conquest Visitor Centre across the road. It's well worth a visit.